Honorable Deputy Speakers, Majority Leader, Minority Leader, Distinguished Colleagues, Ladies and Gentlemen, United for a Better Future, Building a Stronger Philippines for All. I quote, Life denies its best to people who will not give their all to it. Success does not come to the holdouts. The individual who achieves is the one who believes he can and throws himself into reaching his goal. Norman Binsel Peel. In 2022, when you install me as Speaker of this House of Representatives, we were emerging from a multitude of unprecedented challenges. I stood before you then with the assurance that no one gets left behind and that only fairness and equitable distribution of resources for the simultaneous development of all regions shall permeate within the halls of Congress. Our central theme upon the assumption of our duty was unity and solidarity, a much needed solution to a fragmented Filipino society pounded by the debilitating impacts of the pandemic, political divisiveness, threats to our sovereignty, and global conflicts. The odds were stacked against us, and we were confronted with expectations to deliver beyond our imagination. Given the challenges, the 19th Congress ushered in a new era of legislative excellence. I've been privileged to win the support of a substantial majority of honored men and women who now compromise the House of Representatives. Your hard work and dedication greatly contributed to the success of the first and second regular sessions. Together, we have forged a path that sets aside pride, ambitions, differences, and self-interest, but puts ahead perseverance, understanding, diplomacy, and diligence. Nangako tayong lahat na magtatrabaho ng tapat. Nakasundo na isang tabi ang politika. Gagawin ang lahat para iangat ang kabuhayan at ang kabuhayan ng ating mamamayan. As we open the third regular session of the 19th Congress, we ride on the momentum of our significant achievements from the first and regular sessions. Our unwavering commitment to unity and progress has paved the way for transformative laws that uplift and empower every Filipino. Our mission is clear, to build the Philippines where every citizen can live with dignity, opportunity, and hope. We are dedicated to creating a Philippines where dreams can be achieved and where every Filipino feels valued and supported. Together, we continue to build a brighter and more prosperous future for all. Ladies and gentlemen, from the opening of the first regular session on July 25, 2022, to this date, the House of Representatives has attended to a total of 12,405 legislative measures consisting of 10,565 House bills, 1,839 resolutions, and one petition. Out of these numbers, 4,125 measures were processed within a span of 149 session days, or an average of 28 measures processed per session day. In the regular session alone, a total of 58 Republic Acts were enacted, a result of your outstanding consensus building and resolute efforts to accomplish the tasks at hand. If we include the first regular session, the House has been instrumental in the swift passage of 77 laws many of which are of national importance. These include the recently signed two landmark legislations, Republic Act No. 12009 or the new Government Procurement Act 
which introduces crucial reforms that safeguard public funds, eliminate corruption, and foster a more competitive and fair procurement environment. And Republic Act Number 12010, or the Anti-Financial Accounts Scamming Act, which strengthens our financial system by preventing fraud and promoting trust among consumers, businesses, and investors. Worth noting also is Republic Act Number 11976, or the Ease of Paying Taxes Act, which instilled optimism among taxpayers who long for a more streamlined process in dealing with tax-related intricacies and provides a positive move towards improving tax compliance. Laws aiming to promote economic development, such as the Maharlika Investment Fund Act of 2023, RA 11954, extending the availability of tax amnesty, RA 11956, One Town, One Project Philippines Act, RA 11960, Trabajo para Sabayan Act, RA 11962, Public Private Partnership Code of the Philippines, RA 11966, Internet Transactions Act of 2023, RA 11967, and Tatak Pinoy, Proudly Filipino Act, RA 1191, will generate and preserve and grow national wealth, drive inclusive local economic activity, ensure equitable employment, opportunities for all, encourage private enterprise, and provide incentives to investors, boost and maintain a vigorous electronic commerce environment, and promote globally competitive Filipino products and services. We likewise take great pride in our endeavors to protect the environment and ensure sustainable development as demonstrated by the enactment of RA 11995 or the Philippine Ecosystem and Natural Capital Accounting Systems, the PENCAS Act. The House of Representatives also gave significant attention to education and supported the passage of RA 12006 or the Free College Entrance Examinations Act, RA 11984 or the No Permit, No Exam Prohibition Act, and RA 11997 or the Kabalikat sa Pagtuturo Act. Out of the 17 priority measures identified by the President in his 2023 State of the Nation Address, five have been enacted into laws. One bicameral report ratified and presently under enrollment process, another one under deliberation in the Bicameral Conference Committee, and 10 remaining measures have been approved on third and final reading by the House, with one as early as November 2022. This amounts to a 100% approval on third and final reading by this August Chamber of the 2023 SONA Priorities. Lahat na kailang batas na hiniling ni Pangulong Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. sa nakarang State of the Nation Address, pasado na po lahat dito sa House of Representatives. We have done our homework. We address concerns on food, security, climate change, social protection, tourism, public health, public order, safety, among others. Our accomplishments reflect our proactive stance in catering to the needs of the people by passing this much-needed legislation that are tuned to the Philippine Development Plan and the eight-point socio-economic agenda under the medium-term fiscal framework of the President. In fact, the fruits of our overarching development agenda initiatives for the past two years are now slowly being felt across the nation. From the third quarter of 2022 to the first quarter of 2024, the Philippine economy experienced an average growth of 6.1%. For the first quarter of 2024 alone, the Philippine economy outperformed Indonesia at 5.1%, Malaysia at 4.2%, Singapore at 2.7%, and Thailand at 1.5%. In May of this year, the National Economic and Development Authority stated that the country's target growth rate 
of 6 to 7 percent this year is achievable with the implementation of appropriate government policies. As a result, the country is expected to continue outperforming most emerging economies and expand further to a range of 6.5 to 7.5% in 2025. This is not far from the 6.2 economic growth projections for the Philippines in 2025 by key international financial institutions such as the International Monetary Fund at 6.2%, the Asian Development Bank at 6.1%, and the World Bank at 5.9%. I believe, dear colleagues, that policies have all been put in place and the gains of a competent, focused, and thorough legislative process are now bringing significant improvements to our economy. In June of this year, Fitch Ratings, a recognized credit rating company, affirmed the country's investment-grade long-term foreign currency trading at a triple B rating with a stable outlook. This indicates the country's robust medium-term growth and suggests a reduced credit risk. It also states that our ability to meet financial obligations is sufficient. This can be attributed in part to the pursuit of priorities such as the Build Better More infrastructure program and the investments in public-private partnerships. Malina po ang estado ng ating ekonomiya, matibay at matatag. Pinagtitiwalaan hindi lamang sa loob ng ating bansa, kundi maging sa buong mundo. In light of the recent approval on third and final reading of the amendments to the rice tarification law, which seeks to remedy the widening gap between rice retail and farm gate prices, the House of Representatives welcomes and fully supports the move of the President to reduce the tariff on imported rice from 35% to 15% through the issuance of Executive Order Number 62. May I just add that in conjunction with the lowering of rice tariffs, for the benefit of Filipino consumers, we will strive to provide all necessary infrastructure, technological, and financial support to increase the productivity and income of all our farmers. By augmenting the rice supply and managing prices, rice becomes more affordable and thus accessible to all Filipinos. Also, our diplomatic relations and alliances with other countries have also been at an all-time high. In Tokyo last June, the House leadership met with Speaker Fukushiro Nukaga of Japan and other Japanese lawmakers to enhance the defense and security cooperation between our countries. During the meeting, we made a firm commitment to expand the trilateral cooperation among the Philippines, Japan, and the United States. We also addressed the matter of fair access to Philippine agricultural products by reviewing the Philippine-Japan Economic Partnership Agreement, assistance for infrastructure projects through the Official Development Assistance, the ODA, protection of the rights of overseas Filipino workers and Japanese investments. This collaboration serves to fortify our bilateral relations and the strategic partnership. Hindi lamang paggagawa ng batas ang pagpaktibay ng ugnayan sa ibang bansa ng inaasikaso natin. Aktibo pa rin tayo natin ginagamit ang oversight function ng Kongreso para bigyan ng solusyon ang mga problema hinaharap ng ordinaryong mamamayan. In response to the most current and pressing issues, we have reiterated our relentless fight against criminal activities, particularly in the operation of illegitimate Philippine offshore gaming operators, which undermines the integrity of our legal and regulatory framework. We are also looking into the illegal drug trade to intensify our campaign against the proliferation of these substances. Comprehensive congressional investigations on POGO and illegal drugs are underway to identify and prosecute the perpetrators to the fullest extent of the law. The House likewise aims to safeguard the purchasing power of our countrymen by keeping 
inflation under control, and reducing electricity costs. The Philippine Statistics Authority reported that inflation in June decelerated to 3.7% compared to 3.9% in May due to lower energy and transport costs. The amendment to the Electric Power Industry Reform Act, the IPIRA, which we must finish in December, is expected to further ease inflation. On health, a mega 13-story hemodialysis facility will soon rise at the National Kidney and Transplant Institute to serve every Filipino seeking treatment for free. As part, <laughs> this is as a part of the integral legacy specialty hospital projects of the president. Undoubtedly, the successful outcome of all our initiatives would not have been possible without the exceptional synchronization between the workings of the leaders of the House and our counterparts in the Senate. To ensure a seamless legislative flow, both houses agree that our priorities must align with the efforts of the administration of President Marcos Jr. and his agenda for prosperity and the Bagong Pilipinas brand of governance. The existence of this dynamic relation helps formulate and implement government programs efficiently and more effectively. We at the House of Representatives stand united with the President in his desire to advance the legislative initiatives that will shape the nation's path forward. This is a time for unity and we fully support the President. <laughs> Thus, on June 25, 2024, the House and Senate leadership attended the fifth Legislative Executive Development Advisory Council, the LEDAC meeting led by no less than President Marcos Jr., wherein we committed to prioritize the passage of 28 bills under the common legislative agenda before the end of the 19th Congress. Among the bills on the priority list are the Anti-Agriculture Economic Sabotage Act, the Philippine Self-Reliance Defense Posture Program Act, the Philippine Maritime Zones Act, amendments to the Right of Way Act, amendments to the Electric Power Industry Reform Act, or IPIRA, the Create More Act, VAT on Digital Transactions, and our proposal on the reforms in the Philippine capital markets. More importantly, the LEDAC agreed to include the Archipelagic Sea Lanes Act in the top priority list to strengthen the country's sovereignty over its archipelagic waters and maritime resources. In addition, we had decided to include five vital measures to the present LEDAC priority list, which brings to 64 the total number of LEDAC priority measures from the current number of 59. And these include, aside from the Archipelagic Sea Lanes Act and the reforms in the Philippine capital market, I mentioned earlier, number one, amendments to the Foreign Investors Long-Term Lease Act, number two, amendments to the agrarian reform law, and number three, amendments to the rice tarification law. Of equal importance are affordable housing, education, agriculture, welfare programs, and employment generation, which we aim to fund by approving the proposed 6.352 trillion 2025 General Appropriations Bill before the session adjourns in September. We have to continue building roads, highways, ports, school buildings, and climate change-proof structures to maintain and expand economic growth. Progress has to reach the remotest community. Today, I emphasize our commitment to pass the remaining priority bills before the end of the third regular session. We are ready and equally determined to ensure that these critical measures are enacted to support our nation's progress and development. For this purpose, I express no less than your usual cooperation and swift action. Ulag ng ginawa natin nung first at second regular session, ibubuhos natin ang lahat ng lakas at panahon para may pasa ang mga batas na kailangan ng bansa. Esteemed colleagues, this third regular session signifies a distinct period for everyone. 
to those holding office as third-termers, this may be the final stretch to offer and deliver what is most beneficial for your constituents. To some of us, this signals another era in which we must prove ourselves worthy of another term. Regardless of the objective, we are all gunning for the same outcome. Victory for the Filipino, our nation, and the generations to come, and we continue to march toward that goal now. I urge all of you, as I have done during the opening of the two previous regular sessions, to persist in perceiving this church institution as a stronghold of battles won, of glory attained through ceaseless labor day and night, relying solely on our commitment as members of the House to uplift us when our limits are being challenged. Rest not on our laurels, my dear colleagues. Our goal is to conclude the 19th Congress by upholding the principles of democracy, ushering in prosperity, and guiding a fair society. Let us give the Filipino people what they deserve, and they deserve more. Namo nga salamat ngan mabuhay po kita nga tanan. Mabuhay po ang sampay na Pilipino. Mabuhay po ang 19th Congress.